Hello everyone, it's time for another EU news update, and we have a lot to talk about today. As always, for any merchandise you see in this video, there will be links in the description where you can either buy or pre-order them. On November 8th, prolific illustrator Roger Castle passed away at the age of 92 of kidney and heart failure. Roger Castle is most well known for creating the Jaws movie poster, which was based on his drawing for the paperback edition of the Jaws novel. Bantam had given him credit for selling many novels with his artwork, but Universal Studios, who used his image everywhere in marketing for the film, never reached out to him. Afterwards, Lucasfilm had contacted him to do the movie poster for Empire Strikes Back, the very iconic one with Han Solo holding Leia Organa, reminiscent of Gone with the Wind. Evidently, the director of Empire was a huge fan of Gone with the Wind, and wanted the romance of Empire Strikes Back to invoke those same feelings. Roger Castell had made thousands of illustrations for movie posters and book covers. He met his wife Grace Trowbridge when he joined the Navy, and they moved back to New York after he left. She is survived by him, as are their children, grandchildren, and their great-grandson. His works may have just been jobs to him back in the day, but they have endured to become pop culture icons. He will be missed by his friends and family. In book news, we have a few things to go over. The Star Wars Legends Epic Collection, The Empire Volume 8, was released on November 14th. This volume features a handful of Empire comics, leading up to a New Hope Special Edition comic adaptation. It is then followed by a few serious canon comics from Star Wars Tales, before diving into the wacky, non-canon, Infinity side of Star Wars Tales at the back of the book, like Skippy the Jedi Droid. I guess they had to be collected somewhere. The covers for Essential Legends Collection Wave 9 have been revealed. Books in this wave include Knight Errant, Republic Commando Order 66, and Wraith Squadron. Of these three, I think the Knight Errant one actually looks the coolest. Certainly a lot better than the original cover art. Wave 9 of the Essential Legends Collection releases on February 9th, 2024. Also being re-released next year is the Old Republic Epic Collection Volume 1. This contains the first third of the Knights of the Old Republic comic run by John Jackson Miller. This is great news. If Epic Collections and the hardcover omnibuses are how the EU comics are going to be reprinted, then it's important for them to be continuously re-released so that everyone can get a chance to buy them. This Epic Collection is set to come out next year on May 21st. And in international news, on November 16th, the comic collection At War with the Empire was released in Italy, a volume that revisits the Legendary Empire series, which takes us back to the early days of the Rebel Alliance, with stories set before, during, and after the events of A New Hope. This volume contains Star Wars Empire issues 1 through 6, 9 through 11, 13 and 14, 19 through 22, 24 and 25, and 31. In merchandise news, we have a whole lot to cover. A Funko Pop Bobblehead 2 pack with Captain Rex and Ponkrell is now available for pre order. I don't bring up TCW merchandise very often on this channel but the Umbar arc was actually really cool. These figures will be available on December 25th. Speaking of clones, a two-pack of Mace Windu and 187th Legion Clone Trooper Black Series figures were available, but are currently sold out as of this video on Hasbro Pulse. Hopefully, they'll be available again soon. I would advise keeping an eye on it. In any case, this pack features Mace Windu, and the 187th Legion was an elite unit that served directly under him. They were distinguished by their purple markings, which is a direct reference to the Jedi Master's purple lightsaber. The Legion originate from a Target exclusive set from 2006. These Black Series figures are set to be released on May 1st, 2024. Another Hasbro Pulse exclusive to expect in the future will be a Last Command 4-pack with Luke Skywalker, Luke the Evil Clone, Mara Jade, and Joris Sabaoth. Granted, this pack is a good way to get you to buy two Luke Skywalker figures, but the fact that we're getting all these characters as figures, and the scene that they're referencing, is an EU fan's dream come true. A few figures were announced at the London Comic Con. In the Vintage Collection, we have Count Dooku, who won a fan vote earlier this year. He comes with a Force Lightning hand accessory, a lightsaber accessory, and an unlit lightsaber hilt accessory. He is now available for pre-order, and is set to be released on May 1st, 2024. In the Black Series line, we now have Padme Amidala and Anakin Skywalker as they appeared 
in The Phantom Menace just in time for the 25th anniversary of the movie. Padme comes in her Naboo royal outfit with two blaster accessories and an updated facial mold. Child characters are rare in the Black series, but Little Annie did play a very key role in that movie. He comes with a backpack accessory. Both he and Padme are now available for pre-order and are set to be released on May 1st, 2024. Speaking of Phantom Menace, we also have the SH Figure Arts Qui-Gon Jinn figure and Darth Maul figure. These highly detailed figures are made of PVC, ABS, and cloth. Qui-Gon Jinn comes with a lightsaber, a hilt, swappable face parts, a variety of hands, a Jedi communicator, and a hologram device. Darth Maul comes with his deadly double-bladed lightsaber, along with his black robe and his Tatooine probe droid that gets its own display stand, a variety of interchangeable hands, a secondary head, and both figures pair together well. Pre-orders will be available soon, and both are set to be released in April 2024. As part of the Archive Collection, the Rancor Marquette was the first step in designing the classic Rancor creature. With hands-on access to the original film artifact and high-resolution 3D scanning, Regal Robot crafted a faithful recreation of the concept Marquette for this fan-favorite beast from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. At approximately 10.75 inches tall, including the wood display base, each is cast in holly polyurethane resin. 100% made in the USA, every replica in this edition is meticulously hand-painted by the artists in the New York studio, and each come with a Regal Robot Certificate of Authenticity. This edition is limited to 150 pieces and is very close to already selling out. It is now available for pre-order and will ship throughout 2024. And to bring it back to the EU, we have the Shadow Trooper bust from Gentle Giant. This half-scale bust of a black armored stormtrooper is made of resin and sits atop a sculpted technological base. It measures approximately 10 inches tall and is limited to only 1,000 pieces. It comes packaged in a full color box with a numbered certificate of authenticity. It is now available for pre-order and is set to be released in quarter two of 2024. And finally, to celebrate the holiday season, we also have a gentle giant mini bust of Life Day Chewbacca, wearing his Life Day robes and holding a crystalline Life Day orb. Chewbacca is ready to celebrate in this holiday mini bust. It measures approximately seven inches tall, is limited to only 1,000 pieces, and comes packaged with a numbered certificate of authenticity in a full colored box. It is now available for pre-order and is set to be released in quarter three of 2024. And finally, in the Vintage Collection, we have a Chewbacca action figure wearing a traditional red robe and holding a Life Day orb decorated with a field of stars representing the afterlife. Tis the season. And in video game news, we have a few things to talk about. First, in SWOTOR, players in the Asian Pacific region have a new server to call home. The Shave Isla APAC server is now open for all players. The SWOTOR developers have been wanting to open a new server in this region for quite some time now, and with their recent technological upgrades, it is now possible to make that a reality. Over the last year, they've updated the launcher, upgraded the game client to 64-bit, and recently they've migrated all of the game servers to the cloud. This will ensure that the Old Republic MMO, the last bastion of New Legends content, will continue for many years into the future. Star Wars Empire at War developer Petroglyph released a massive patch 17 years after the game's initial release, which converted both Empire at War and its expansion Forces of Corruption from 32-bit to 64-bit applications, which the developer said should solve many out-of-memory bugs and crashes that players were experiencing. Petroglyph has addressed multiplayer out-of-sync issues, which should improve stability, and made numerous gameplay fixes addressing balance and incorrect unit behavior. There's excitement too about the potential for renewed interest in modding with a switch to 64-bit. This is huge news for the game as its modding community is massive. I'm so happy that Petroglyph made this update when they really didn't have to. Remember when Aspire promised the release of the Restored Content DLC to the Switch port of Knights of the Old Republic 2? backtracked on that a year later, and then got sued over it, while well, Aspire's co-CEO, Ted Salak, noted in a court filing that Aspire believed it would be able to release the content, but a third party objected, and Aspire was unable to do so. Well, 
I guess that answers everything. Wait a minute. A third party? Who? Aspire, you are so full of shit. You had to get into a lawsuit just to give us this much info. And you're still not telling us why the DLC couldn't be released. Name the third party. And also, I hope you lose the lawsuit. If that wasn't crazy enough, the Coda remake went through even more drama this month. Insider leaker Jeff Grubb claimed that the game was no longer in development by anyone. But then days later, Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier says that he talked with two people from Saber Interactive who are still working on it. This game is Schrodinger's remake. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist till it actually comes out. But what do you all think? Let me know in the comments below.